You're listening to Sports Radio Detroit. Welcome to Grave Discussions. I am your host, Barnabas. And I am your co-host, Samael. Welcome to episode 84. Get stuffed! Mm-hmm. That's right, and this episode is coming just in time for Thanksgiving. So uh, even though it's primarily celebrated in North America, uh, if you're international, then you know probably know about Thanksgiving. It's a typically a time for getting together with family, friends, sharing what you're thankful for, remembering the Native American genocide, all those fun sorts of things. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, it's not really featured too much in horror, but there are some horror movies that uh, do concern Thanksgiving or are set around Thanksgiving. We're going to focus on one in particular today, (laughs) which, uh, well... It's it's something. <laughs> We're going to be talking about thanks killing, and that's coming up as always in our main segment. It really is something, huh? <laughs> you were just going to have to reserve all of our judgment for the main segment, okay. but <laughs> and then we're going to give you guys a, a couple other suggestions as well at the end of that. So stick around for that. Uh, we are going to get into the horror news, but as always, we got to start out by giving a shout out to Sports Radio Detroit, our gracious host network. Yes, and you can find them on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Just look up SRD Sports Radio Detroit. That's SRD Sports Radio Detroit, not Detroit Sports Radio. Yeah, get it right, guys. So, a lot has been going on, of course, as always in the world of horror um and this first one is a cool bit of news i'm not really familiar with the property but rosa salazar who uh just starred recently in alita battle angel is going to star in a new netflix horror series called brand new cherry flavor from the team behind channel zero and this is actually an adaptation of a horror novel from todd grisham and it's kind of like a horror thriller Todd revenge Grisham. series. Yeah. The WWE fucking interviewer guy? No, that's actually an author, Todd Grisham. Okay. I, don't, I don't think they're the same guy. That would be funny as hell if they were. It would be, yeah. It's like, we gotta hey, aren't, you the, out. aren't you that uh, sp- uh, wrestling commentator? Well, yeah, but I have a and secret now, author. And now business. he's also like a UFC interviewer. Like, he's oh, everywhere now. Nice. Like, There's probably, like, you know more than one Tom, Todd Grisham, but I don't know for sure. I've never seen them in the same room. Glasses so. and <laughs> hair. That's what he looked yeah. like. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that is being adapted. Uh, Rosa Salazar is going to star in it. Also, we've got Catherine Keener, Eric Lang, Jeff Ward, Manny Yacinto. And basically the story uh, is about Lisa Nova, an aspiring film director in 1990 Los Angeles who embarks on a mind-altering journey from the streets of Beverly Hills to the forests of Brazil of supernatural revenge. And that's all it says. The eight episode series is going to be penned by Nick Antosca and Lenore Zion. I have no idea what to expect. (laughs) Brazil, Los Angeles, 1990s, supernatural revenge. If you put all those words in a word bank, the the topic I would choose would probably be like things that don't belong together. Like 1990s. Los Angeles, Brazil, supernatural revenge. Like, it's, what if that was just like the tagline for the movie? 1990s, Los Angeles, Brazil, supernatural revenge. I mean, honestly, I would fucking watch it. So. It, it would be like one of those like fucking 70s trailers where they'd just be like, brand new cherry yeah. flavor, supernatural revenge, only in theaters, brand new cherry flavor. <laughs> That would be the shit. Hey, I there's that uh, hard candy. I mean, oh god, you know I, the premise is actually pretty interesting. I have no idea what the fuck to expect, but it sounds cool, and I like you know these types of uh, horror or thriller things that uh, kind of are like an adventure take place, you know, in m- multiple locations, and especially 1990 is such an interesting year. So I don't know. I'm I'm interested to see like what significance that has. 
So yeah, that one that one sounds cool, and it's coming from the Channel Zero team. We actually still have to watch that show, but uh, I've heard nothing have, but good things. I have really. it. Yeah, I have the whole thing. So whenever you want to start, for sure. So yeah, guys, uh, be on the lookout for that one. Now this next article actually uh, just popped up today. I'm actually super interested by this, so why don't you go ahead and tell them what it's about. So, Renfield is getting his own film at Universal. Now, I want to know if, like, it's it's going to be, like, was it, is it going to be a direct, like, right after Dracula takes place? Or is it going to be, like, he becomes a vampire and then hundreds and hundreds mm-hmm. of years later, and now it's modern day and Renfield is still out there? Because they made a Renfield movie already. But not today as in Universal. Like, a Renfield movie has been made. Oh, okay. It's on Tubi TV. Well, the only thing really that this... There's actually a lot of very interesting information in this article. But the the big thing is that it is going to be a a modern retelling or adaptation. I don't know. Do you see the screenplay, though? Yeah. The screenplay is going to be by Ryan Ridley. (laughs) Who, yeah, who is uh, one of the writers of Rick and Morty. What? (laughs) what yeah it's really weird not only that uh robert kirkman is also attached to this because it's based on an original pitch from him and then the director of rocket man which is the recent elton john biopic uh dexter fletcher is going to direct so there's some what is going on here i have no fucking clue there's some really interesting pieces it's going to be modern but it's going to be about renfield uh dracula's of course famous uh, servant in the dracula storyline so um I'm, I'm very curious i really hope they don't take some like stupid ass approach but uh you know it is kind of keeping consistent with like the invisible man you know after the whole like other dark universe concept I mean, with the mummy and shit was scra- up, scrapped dude. frankenstein as well yeah dude i like that like all these like fucking hammer films and shit are like mm-hmm. being made like modern day yeah, I mean, again, as long you know, as they do a good job, I don't, I don't mind. I still wish that the whole universal dark universe that they were planning took off, but after the mummy, it was just fucking downhill. And if if the Invisible Man is as good as it looks, then like this could totally work. A good Frankenstein could totally work. You know, it's been a while since I think we've had a really good Frankenstein thing too. So, uh, yeah, this is pretty exciting news. I just am curious to see like. Yeah, exactly. Like, what the story of Renfield is. Like, is he going to be a vampire? Is he going to find, like, a new Dracula or, like, a new master or something? I, don't, I have no idea. So, but the the crew is super interesting, and I can't wait to hear more about it. <laughs> so, uh, let's move on, though. Now, this is also a pretty cool announcement. This is more I thought. toward you because you're the Dark Crystal guy. Yeah. I mean, Dark Crystal is awesome. I still have to watch the new series, but the important thing here is that the uh, team of puppeteers behind the series is working on an old-school practical creature feature called Creatures. So um, it, it seems pretty cool. There's a poster. Um, it's just got it like a looks claw. Like Krampus. Yeah, a little bit. People were complaining about that, and then people said that oh, like really? the CGI of the, of the hand is kind of defeating the purpose of the whole practical effects approach. But I hope the movie's good. Uh, they're really talented puppeteers and this is kind of trying to get all the like classical creature feature fans in on this basically saying if you love Night of the Creeps, Critters, Ghoulies, Gremlins, etc. then you're probably going to love this movie. So I don't know it seems interesting. It's coming from the director of Cute Little Buggers which I, I haven't seen. Tony Jopia, Jopia? and uh, yeah seems cool there's a premise as well a group of astronomy students get more than they bargained for after finding an injured alien who is being targeted by a group of bloodthirsty alien creatures so i don't know sounds cool to me i mean yeah i mean i don't know dude uh i've been complaining a lot lately about me wanting like more creature features so i mean now we're getting it but there's still all those sticklers like you said complaining about like the, some of the cgi but I mean, it's necessary in some places, you know what I mean? But well, it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't look half bad. I, I hope, yeah, I mean... I mean, most of it's going to be like puppeteering, right? So, yeah, you know... So who gives it, a fuck about the cover? It's really yeah, it's really just that, and like, we haven't even seen any footage yet. Even if there is some CGI, I think if they have the right talent in the crew, uh, from what I've seen of the new Dark Crystal series, like, that was a perfect blend of CGI and, uh, you know 
uh, practical effects. And this is supposedly set in like the real world, so they're not even gonna really probably have to do much with CGI. So I'm excited. I mean, the storyline seems maybe a little typical of like those old school creature features, but this is gonna be just a flat out like nostalgic, you know, throwback movie. So I'm into it. I mean, I can't really complain too much about those. But uh, yeah, once we have more info, guys, we'll keep you posted, of course. Now we've got a few trailers here. We're gonna go through these pretty quick, and then we're gonna get into uh, our our main discussion. So this oh. this first trailer this looks like the biggest troll of all time, dude. It, it does, yeah. I didn't really like know too much about this guy, but uh, Netflix is releasing a new true crime documentary for all of you fanboys and fangirls out there um, about Henry Lee Lucas, who was actually the focal point of Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer back in the day. And, uh, yeah, this one looks wild. It looks like just some dude who's confessing to a whole bunch of crimes just because he feels good about being the one to solve them. That's what it seems like. Like, that's why he's doing it. Mm -hmm. And then, like, everyone's like, I I don't think he's the guy. And then he's like, I might not be, I might be. You know, like, it's just, yeah. it's, I, I really, I've never even heard of this. So I'm guessing he's bullshitting. I have no idea. I mean, apparently he got convicted for all these crimes, even though there was no, like, hard evidence, just because he confessed to him, which, I mean, I guess is as good a a reason as any, but it's still super weird. You know, apparently he he killed over, like, 100 people, but we don't know, and that's the whole focus of this documentary. Um, So, honestly, it sounds interesting. I'm not, like, a true crime buff, just because I generally like my horror to be more, like, supernatural and stuff, but uh, it does seem cool. I'm I'm really interested to see, like, what kind of stuff they dig up on it but that one's coming out december 6th on netflix so really soon actually be on the lookout for that next up we've got a found footage horror movie which i actually haven't seen too much of recently but uh this one is tba it's playing at some film festivals but still something to keep your eyes on it's called dwellers it doesn't look bad but it it doesn't look great yeah (laughs) I mean, which is the norm with movies nowadays? I don't know what what's going on, but it's usually like just right down the middle, like average looking, yeah, especially yeah. in the trailers. Again, this is kind of hinging on big names and comparing itself to big names, apparently, which I don't like doing. I, I, I don't like when movies have to be like, well, this is basically Gremlins plus blah, 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 plus blah, 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 just to entice people. It's like... You should you should speak more with like the footage and what you've done rather than just being like, hey, you want to watch a movie that's Chud plus Blair yeah. Witch Project? <laughs> it's like I guess it kind of looks but... like the tunnel. You remember that movie? It do- yeah, that too. So th- this movie is essentially a found footage following uh, a crew who are investigating homeless people disappearing, which is a big part of the Chud, of course, but. It's also found footage, so it's got that kind of effect going on, and it looks super low budget. Uh, it's actually pretty interesting because apparently one of the guys from, um, I think, Megadeth is producing it, so I don't know what that's about, but cool. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck is going on? I, yeah, I don't Next know. thing, Ozzy Osbourne's going to be like funding a remake of Ragman. I mean, shit, LeBron is like trying to... Yeah. Fun Friday the 13th. I mean, but he's he's a big Friday the 13th fan. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, if it's by a fan who has money, I'm cool with it. Honestly, I expect it more from like a metalhead and, you know, someone from like Megadeth, but that's besides the point, I guess. Just an interesting tidbit. This one uh, could be okay. The only redeeming parts for me in the trailer, really, because the production design looked like ass. Even if you have found footage, it should look like decently cinematic, I think. But anyway... There was like one scene where there's like a hand coming out. So it kind of looks like there might be some okay practical effects, but you know, that's that's to be determined. So uh, once we have a date for that one, guys, we'll uh, try to let you know. And then last up is a movie called Killer Therapy. Now this one also I don't does not have a date. What's going in that trailer. <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite sure either, but this looks like some uh, psychological serial killer type shit. And uh, it's coming from director Barry J, who did uh, Ashes, which I haven't seen, but apparently was pretty well received. And this one's actually got Tom Matthews from uh, Return of the Living Dead fame and Friday the 13th, of course. So 
that's cool. It's also got PJ Souls, Adrian King, and a few other people, but interesting. And it basically follows this uh, disturbed kid with sociopathic tendencies dealing with a whole bunch of shit. And I'm assuming he just goes crazy and starts killing people, basically. Yeah, uh, it it seems super dark. Uh, I like the, the the trailer was atmospheric. It didn't give a lot away other than like some dude going crazy and killing people. Like that's really all you saw. Yeah, so. it kind of reminds me. I haven't seen it, but there was a trailer for that. Um, it's something about being a serial killer. You might be a serial killer or something like that. Oh, you might I, be the killer. Not that one. This is this. Oh, I am on, not a serial killer. That one. Okay. Yeah, on Netflix, which I haven't seen. It looked okay. Kind of reminds me of that. And I think this is actually supposed to follow this kid as he grows up and develops these tendencies. So seems kind of interesting. Uh, looks like it could be okay. Cinematography looks okay. So uh, I'm a bit interested in this one. Again, no release date yet, but it is uh, in the film festival circuit. So yeah, just stay tuned for that one, guys. Yeah, yeah. I was reading, uh, let's go back a step, the previous one. Okay. Uh, I was reading the comments and apparently they're on... They're going from film festival to film festival now, like sharing like that movie with people, okay. like showing it, like because I was like I was reading through the comments and the guy who made it, that's what he said. They're going fest- festival to festival, showing. Oh, it. okay, cool. So, forgot to mention that it just popped up into my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's pretty common for them to shop it around and look for distribution, etc. So, nice. I mean, hopefully we see a release, you know, twenty twenty, early twenty twenty, hopefully. So, uh, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for all the news this week, guys. If you have any questions about anything like that, you know, drop a comment, send us an email, whatever. But uh, we are going to be moving on. And first, we do have to give uh, some other SRD shows the spotlight. So stick around for some messages. We'll be back very shortly with more Grave Discussions. Hi, this is Jason Pinkham from Pucking Around and Spinning the Wheels on Sports Radio Detroit. Check us out every Sunday over on the SRD Hockey Feed on Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Podbean, iTunes, and Stitcher. That's SRD Hockey in your search bar. New episodes every week. Hi, this is Chris. And this is Roger. And if you like Tigers baseball, Major League Baseball, Minor League Baseball, analytics pop culture references, movies, sports, food. Check us out. Look for Tigers SRD on iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify. Welcome back, creeps. So, <laughs> this uh, this episode, I know you kind of hate me, Sam, but, yep. <laughs> but uh, I, I felt like it was only natural because, believe it or not, Thanks Killing, directed by uh, Jordan Downey from 2009, is kind of like the most Thanksgiving like themed horror film that there is, at least that I've, that I've found. So it felt only right to talk about it, even though it's really, really bad. Yeah. Probably one of the worst <laughs> movies I've ever <laughs> fucking seen. I, uh, the Turkey is like the only really redeemable part. Yeah. Uh, even like right off the bat, you could tell, uh, it's going to be a wild ride. Cause like there's just the, pilgrim chick with her tits out running and then turkey comes out of nowhere come here bitch and wait no he says uh nice tits bitch yeah like <laughs> he, he's always with the bitch he's just like uh what's his name from fucking rick and morty oh uh scary, scary terry, terry. Yep. Yeah. so yeah. yeah and uh he's not really witty uh at all he's just kind of very like obnoxious this mm. is probably the most obnoxious movie i've ever watched besides like student bodies yeah it's in that light and it's the acting is so horrible they told the same joke about the fucking gordon ramsay no, not gordon ramsay J- john, john benet ramsay <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys i'm high so she made <laughs> the same close your legs gordon ramsay <laughs> yeah close your legs gordon ramsay there's too much salt on that chicken you killed your child oh, you whore like shit. but yeah the john benet ramsay joke was made twice yeah and God. the acting was horrible. Uh, the stupid girl was exceptionally oh, stupid. Man. She was dumber than anyone in movie history other than that one chick from Cutthroat. You remember that that blonde chick? Yeah. But at the end, she ends up like God. saving the day. So, no, but, not but this one. Not this one, no. <laughs> dumber than a bag of bricks. She had no redeeming, no redeeming qualities other than the fact that she was just like the hot dumb chick. 
Like when the car broke down and they opened the hood and she's like, oh I think it could be a flat tire. And she's like, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, clearly the movie is is meant to be bad. I mean, I don't think that... No, like, that's intentionally supposed to be bad. Yeah, like, because even, even like the dumbest filmmaker, like you literally have had to see like zero movies in your lifetime to make something this bad yeah if it wasn't like intentional so it was obviously intentional it was made on a budget of 3500 bucks i like the score <laughs> hey yeah this hey, the score was good i mean you know for what it was which is just like a r- super raunchy completely terrible basically spoof of bad movies almost <laughs> it, you know it wasn't like completely terrible i mean it it has its entertainment value oh, yeah. for sure i mean it, it's got actually like not half bad practical effects yeah the gore was pretty dope uh other than like when they were like when they tossed the turkey and yeah when he was radioactive and but hey you I know i believe you made me watch that <laughs> That was my first time ever watching it by for the some way. reason i thought you had seen it before so i was like oh you probably like are just gonna get a kick out of watching it again but nope no, that's fucking, awesome no joe years ago made a review on youtube mm-hmm. under his channel silent joe 313 man and he he literally warned me not to watch it so i was like hey i got a movie that you'll hate and we watched stan helsing after that oh, and we yeah. did a review and he's like no this is still not as bad as thanks killing i was <laughs> like really bullshit nice. and then i never watched it until yesterday and wow i thought trauma made bad movies <laughs> at least they try to be like kind of artistic this is just like let's just make the worst piece of shit that we can find i think they succeeded with that <laughs> but the acting was it was really bad was horrible there's nothing redeemable about these characters other than the fact that the bad like they yeah. purposely acted like bad actors and even like the the nerdy like virgin kid became a douchebag yeah. toward the end of the movie so yeah there was just nothing like you didn't want any of them to succeed or or to even live like you wanted them all to die immediately upon meeting them I, yeah and and they slowly do but man it's it kind of is hard sometimes to just look past the sheer stupidity that's going on like when that fucking sheriff uh invited the turkey in and he was dressed as a turkey and then they were having like a normal conversation and the guy was like it like didn't even realize that it was like a talking evil turkey i was just like Whew. when the man or like when they took the he cut the sheriff's face off she's like hi daddy and she's oh like hugging God. him like i was like no fucking way she dude. had to bend down like three and a half feet just to like kiss him on the cheek took right? off the hat oh you had a haircut oh, oh man Oh and she was supposed God. to be like the smart girl too yeah dude like <laughs> oh, i <man>. mean <laughs> i knew it was gonna be like okay uh, the turkey in the tits like nice tits bitch like okay that cool but then like once like there was a piece of turd in coffee i knew uh, that movie was like going downhill yeah and you know it really doesn't get much better than that it doesn't <laughs> at all i mean there's like no production value there's no lighting there's there's nothing really but but it's just pure flat out slapstick like just dumb shit yeah entertainment and and you know sometimes and movies it's only, like that have to exist and it's only an hour and six minutes yeah and it's free on tubi yeah so my recommendation is honestly dude get fucking drunk as ball, <laughs> balls or get high as fuck and watch yeah. this movie like i was watching like the first 20 minutes sober I was like, holy fuck, this is the worst thing I'm I ever watched. surprised you made it that long. And honestly. I rolled one of those fucking death joints, and I was like, you know what? This movie's not half fucking bad. Like, this is actually really entertaining. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, the practical effects weren't bad. Like, when he cut out the fucking uh, nerd's yeah. heart, that was pretty cool. Just the radioactive stuff and the... Yeah. I think the dad's death was my favorite. I, I can agree with that. I, <laughs> I don't know, man. I just think, like, you gotta settle in and just just know that you're watching something that was made to just make you angry at the world, you know, and make you want to like send death threats to this director. It's that, it's that bad. (laughs) That's that's how I felt about it. I was like, Jesus Christ. And then I looked up his like history and there was a sequel to thanks killing, which this is how you continue to know that he's just fucking with you. It's called thanks killing three. I'm going to go, I'm going to watch it. <laughs> I kind of want to. Yeah. Cause apparently this one made like over $110,000 on Kickstarter or something. So like, I have to wonder if it improved whatsoever 
or if it's still like just as improved bad. Improved by like be even worse, you mean? <laughs> like, because that's how improvement Probably. would be in like these type of satirical horror movies. Like, like they have more money to just do the dumbest shit. Yeah. But not improve the actual like quality of no, the no, film. No, no, I wouldn't want all. that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe a little bit better acting, but like yeah. really like stupid, oblivious characters like in Scary Movie. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think even probably like the camera quality doesn't get much better i mean maybe it looks slightly more cinematic but i have no idea this one though did not look cinematic no it's just like it looked like it was recorded off like a fucking mashed potato <laughs> probably it was probably like a mashed potato plugged into like a motorola razor or something and and that was it so yeah it's uh it's a wild ride man uh, like personally at, you know, the good thing is that at least the pacing was okay because like you mentioned it was only an hour and six minutes long so it goes from like pointless fucking meandering dialogue for like a couple minutes to just more killing and more dumb shit going on. So there's enough of it to like keep you entertained if you can like get over the fact that it's just really awful. Um, if you're like, you know, a fucking movie connoisseur, then you probably just won't be able to stand this movie. But if oh, you're yeah. looking for something just really stupid and brainless to just kind of turn on and experience then thanks killing is your thing and like i said before we can touch on this briefly i mean it kind of is like the most thanksgiving heavy like horror film out there at least as far as as i've seen there is one that uh came out recently called pilgrim on hulu uh, as part of the into the dark series that kind of you know has that thing going on but most people when they when they think of thanksgiving horror honestly it's it's thanksgiving even though this is like low key you but... know what i would pick mm-hmm. poltergeist the original one. Oh, yeah yeah doesn't it take place native like... american burial ground and yeah. stuff like that and would be the direct cause of like you know this like white takeover yeah so like i, I would say poltergeist kind of indirectly yeah. poltergeist is a thanksgiving horror movie all right yeah I mean, you can go check out Pol- or Poultry Geist. Or Fuck You. How's that? <laughs> oh, we still haven't seen that one, but I, I have just know it. that I, it's wild. It's trauma, so like, yeah. I'm kind of cool with it. I saw one of the killing scenes, and that shit is fucking wild. I probably know which one you're talking the about. fucking yeah. kitchen scene where everyone's getting like... Doesn't a guy's like face get ripped off or yeah. something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that shit crazy. was pretty cool. So, hey, I mean, you, can, you guys can check that one out too. Um, there's also a couple more, which, you know, full disclosure, haven't seen these either, but... Um, there's one called Blood Rage. I've seen that you, one. How was that one? Uh, it's okay. There's like twin brothers. One of them killed someone and then blamed the not killer. And then the not killer broke out and they were in the actual killer that was living with the mom all those years was trying to be like, oh, he's trying to kill people. But it was him who's still mm. killing people. Okay. Interesting. And I think doesn't it, it just like takes place on Thanksgiving? Yeah, or it's not really festive. Or something? Okay yeah see so, so that's the thing like there are a lot of movies that kind of take place on or around thanksgiving or something but it doesn't really like play super heavily into the story yeah i've never seen anything <laughs> thanks killing though fucking killer turkey <laughs> i guess you could say you are next since it was like a whole family dinner type thing or yeah kind of i mean Unless there was that, was that. I'm, i don't remember if there was even a holiday associated with it but yeah it was kind of like a big kind of get together type thing so I mean, there's that. Uh, there's another movie that I found called Christie, which actually looked pretty all right. I think it was from like 2014 or something like that. And uh, it follows this girl who I think is like stuck or something on her college campus during Thanksgiving break, something like that. And uh, there's a killer on campus or what she thinks is a killer. The cover makes it look like it's some kind of supernatural thing going on, but not sure. I do kind of want to check that one out. So those are a few other suggestions if you can't like stomach thanks killing or if you just want uh, more thanksgiving horror to kind of get into the spirit but yeah man it's uh it's something this is the second time i've seen this movie and i thought i remembered but clearly i didn't because yeah, I, I just wasn't ready for it, it was i wasn't ready either <laughs> i wish joe would have like gave me like a more ominous warning like like, like if you watch, watch this movie you're gonna want to kill yourself like, yeah that kind of shit. <laughs> now, oh i would have watched it right away like hell no, yeah let's no. get over with <laughs> well i mean i, I kind of felt that way too honestly so yeah i don't, I don't condone you. killing yourself but just because i want to kill myself doesn't mean you guys should want to no uh, nobody should want to but you know what but some of us watch, watch things killing yeah 
then fucking happens, man. It's just a side effect. I literally <laughs> want to blow my brains all over like my neighbor's porch oh, just man. to confuse him. Like, <laughs> oh my god! Like, uh, yeah. just, just dead neighbor on. Now he's the suspect. You know, <laughs> like, oh, man. just ruin his fucking the next three weeks of his life. Jeez, just the three weeks though. <laughs> but you know, what? I will say finally one 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 other thing uh, that I did appreciate about Things Killing at the very least was just the stupid one-liners from Turkey. I mean, yeah. say what you will, but they're pretty fucking the hilarious. shotgun in the car. You remember that one? No, oh, yeah. And he's like, oh, you got a tight ass. He's like, sorry, guy. Not now or ever. And he turns around <laughs> with that shotgun. Call your wife. <laughs> I love I love the... I think it was the dad one where he, he was like, you just got stuffed. Yeah. Or no, after he, after he uh, fucks that, that girl or whatever, I after think. After he kills yeah. the dude... While he's fucking her, and yeah. Then he oh my her. god, it's just super raunchy, super gross, and uh, possibly one of the worst movies in history. But it po- has its charm. But possibly fucking charm. Possibly the most entertaining Thanksgiving horror movie to exist. One so. of the only ones. So it's okay. Yeah, exactly. So it's, hey, it's a small sample size, but you know what? There it is. So go check out Thanks Killing if it sounds any amount of appealing to you whatsoever even for the stupidity go check it out i know a lot of you like bad movies so there you go check out some of the other suggestions and let us know what you think about thanks killing and all that other stuff on our social media you can check us out on facebook and instagram at grave discussions and twitter at grave disc srd you can also check out the website grave discussions.net for the newest episode host bios and much much more so did you have anything else you want to say about uh thanks killing or thanksgiving no i was gonna say just it's almost time guys just put on thanks killing it's a family oriented movie <laughs> watch it with the young ones watch it with the <laughs> old ones and have fun yeah just ignore the titty like right at the beginning other than that psh, smooth sailing oh yeah it's, you don't got anything to worry about yeah nothing nothing at all and don't quote us on that <laughs> And make not sure not liable for any mental or physical damages. Yeah, that's all on you. You chose to watch the movie. I didn't make you. I just suggested it. You still chose. But, guys, that's all the time we have for today. We got to get our mind off of things killing <laughs> and watch something to shake mm-hmm. off that evil. So make sure you tune in on Grave Discussion. <laughs> and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. This has been an SRD production.